It rained and it rained and it rained, and the grass got greener and greener and greener. Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm just had to go out and splash and slither about. But when he did, a mathematician spotted him and asked, Poor Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm, don't you have a home? Don't you have a house? Don't you have a roof to put over your head? Let me fetch you a carton. You can live in here. And so he put Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm inside a carton. And then he said, Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm, wouldn't you like to learn how to count? And Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm, before he could answer, got numbers written all over him by the kind mathematician. Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm didn't know what to think. Hmm, but the kind mathematician said, I can entertain you. I will give you fun puzzles to do every day. For example, you'll arrive home one day and you'll have the numbers 1 and 25. You have to put yourself on top of them. So you see, you've got the 1 and you've got the 25 and you've managed to curl yourself around so the rest of you fits in. You see how it works? That's right. Do you have any requests, Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm? What, what kind of things do you not want me to do in my puzzle? And Willy Wiggle Wiggle Worm thought for a second and he said, I can go up and I can go right and down and left, but I don't do diagonals. Okay, the mathematician said, no problem, I won't make you do math uh, diagonals. But why? Why? said Willy Wiggle Worm, because I don't want to end up like this. Okay, said the mathematician, no problem. I'll make sure the problems don't have, never need you to go diagonal. Okay, so for example, let's look at some problems. Now I'm talking to you teachers. Um, this might be a problem that, that you give to your students. 3, 7, 13, and 25. This is a moderately tough problem, um, but it, it has some parts of it that are easy. For example, a 3 and a 7 at the top, um, the students can figure out that you need to go right across the top, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then the 2 can only be one place. So the 2 and the 1 would have to be beside it. So you've got the head, and then you have to get over to the 13, and there's actually only one way to do that. And then it's just a matter of finishing it off. And um, this is this would not be a problem that you would start on, but I just wanted to show you um, the process by which a moderately difficult problem could be solved. What problem do you start with? Uh, I would start with this sheet, and I'm going to show you just the problem in the upper left. So there's a number of different things that you can do with this. The first and um, the first thing that you can do is you can look at patterns. So you can get the children to solve it and there's many many different ways to solve this. Here's one and uh, you can ask them to find a different way. Um, here would be another. So here they're not focusing on the numbers at all. Here you've just given them the position of the head and asked them to come up with a pattern that fits in the whole snake. Grade 1 students also need lots of practice in writing numbers, and so um, you can also choose a totally different tack that they have to write down all of the numbers uh, as they're going through each square. So there's a, another possibility, or you could have them just write down the numbers. Uh, this is the next step up. This sheet is quite a bit more difficult. They've got less flexibility. Um, and uh, I think I think actually there's only unique answers to all of these. This is considerably more difficult. And one thing that all students should experience in this problem is creating their own to give to their peers and to pose a problem for you to solve. Um, some of these problems are going to be painful, but you have to make sure that they have an answer before they give it to another student or before they give it to you. 
the last stage is only for kids that are rocketing ahead and you need to rein them in, you keep a serious face and you give them one of these problems. All of these problems are impossible. The top two are impossible for um, reasons that are fairly easy to figure out uh, and therefore are fantastic to use for grade one students. The bottom two you probably won't want to use but I give them here um, only uh, for in case you have one of those students who really gets into the problem and really wants to explore um, what is possible and what's not. Thank you.